The nature of change and change itself is at the heart of the works of William Butler Yeats. Drawn from a context of significant change within his immediate and wider world, Yeats explored and pondered how such inevitability affected the individual. His poetry represents the antithetical response to change as a process of acceptance and resistance. In this presentation, I'll examine how this concept is represented through the language, content and constructions within some of the seven prescribed poems, namely Wild Swans at Cool, Easter 1916 and The Second Coming. This approach is a model for your own treatment and response to his works within the Module B Critical Study of Text. You should be considering the patterns that are developing through Yeats's poems and ask yourself some key questions once you familiarise yourself with the seven poems. What ideas manifest themselves through a number of poems? How are these ideas represented through similar or different devices, forms and structures? And what do you notice about the evolution of ideas in reflecting the changing context of Yeats's time of composition of each poem? So, let's look at the concept of change through the lens of these key questions. Contextually, change is a prominent concern through Yeats's work. He was confronted with a changing world. World War I, the Russian Revolution, the move from the Victorian sensibility, a time of decadence and aestheticism, to a modernist zeitgeist, a time of fragmentation and questioning. In Ireland, change was evident in the ethno-nationalist conflict that had its origins in Protestant settlement of Catholic regions in Northern Ireland during the early 1600s. The desire for Irish self-rule manifested in the Easter Uprising of 1916 and led to the execution of 15 rebels and eventually the petitioning of Ireland in 1920. This conflict was deeply troubling to Yeats and became one of many events unfolding in the early 20th century that made him feel the momentum for change on a universal scale. Personally, Yeats also felt the pull of change through the process of ageing, again, something which made him reflect deeply on the process and response to change. We see this personal reflection of change represented clearly in Wild Swans of Cool. His references to seasons and time signpost this emphasis on change. Note the repetition of autumn, twilight. These are both in-between times, moments of transition from summer to winter, day to night. Such images establish the tension that exists in experiencing change, where you are yearning for what has been, yet longing for what is ahead. The swans serve as a symbol of permanence and eternity. Their hearts have not grown old, juxtaposed to the speaker's realisation that all's changed for him over the 19 autumns. This juxtaposition between humanity and nature is also found in Easter 1916. This hyperbole is echoed and extended in this poem. All changed changed utterly. Yeats's contemplation of change is more deeply felt but still uncertain in his response to change. We sense this through the ambiguity and paradox of key aspects. The terrible beauty that is born out of change is at once terrifying and wonderful. As well as the symbolism that Yeats employs in recurring references to the swans and he also uses a motif of stone, which is both ambiguous and representing perhaps the inflexibility of the revolutionaries, that their fixed ideas in the midst of chains, their hearts with one purpose alone, enchanted to a stone to trouble the living stream. Or perhaps the stone represents the platonic ideal of an immutable idea in the flux of the Irish landscape. Like the swans with their capacity to be both full of movement, scatter, wheeling in great broken wings. Yet also still, Yeats reveals the tension that exists in our response to change. Yeats's interest in change through his poetry, represented symbolically and metaphorically, is also mirrored in the shifting form itself. We can see this palpably in the evolution of his poetic form and his perception of self as poet. 
In his lifetime, Yeats moved from the view of poet laureate, a public figure with a responsibility for capturing the current ideology, to a poet as to a poet as symbolist, a seer, a visionary of what is to come. Yeats's work moves from a sense of reality, as we see in Easter 1916, an elegy for a historic event, to a vision of reality in the second coming. The use of the gyre as a key motif in his work is crucial in embodying the inevitable change in human history where one epoch will replace another. Yeats employs language in this poem which is full of imprecise cultural resonance. The language is imprecise and ac- abstract, a shift and change in his work overall. Symbolism drives the poem through the allusions and imagery to the birth of Christ, the second coming, a rocking cradle, and the sphinx, a shape of lion body and the head of man, and the apocalypse, the blood dim tide, He creates a violent conjunction between bestial, supernatural and human to reveal the changing times, the transition to a new age. Like wild swans, Yeats employs a lexicon of movement in the gyration of birds, turning and turning, real shadows of the indignant desert birds, and then the linear movement of the beast, which, moving its slow thighs, slouches towards Bethlehem. The ending of the poem on a rhetorical question, to be born, reflects the speaker's uncertainty about what this inevitable change will bring, an apocalyptic enunciation, the antithesis of the Christian age. Change is an enduring concern for Yeats. Both content and form reflect his interest in the tension that exists in the way we acknowledge the inevitability of change, yet resistant.